Hello everybody, I'm Slimane one more time. Um, today, glad to meet you again. Today I'm gonna focus on past perfect and past perfect continuous. So let's hopefully start. Well, part one has to do with past perfect, as you can see. Now let's see a few examples of past perfect. First, the man died. Then the ambulance arrived. The man died. Then the ambulance arrived. Now this sentence should be written this way. The man had died before the ambulance arrived. Or maybe before the ambulance arrived, the man had died. So no matter which clause the past perfect tense is written in, whether in the first clause of the sentence or in the second clause of the sentence, it always expresses priority in time, which means the past perfect tense happened first in time. Had died tells us that this event happened first in time. Another example. Well, first he got a job, then he bought a new car. He got a job, then he bought a new car. So, which action comes first? Apparently, getting the job is the first, and then after is buying the car. The sentence look, looks like he bought a new car after he had got a job. He bought a new car after he had got a job. We may even switch it and say, before, we bought, before he bought a new car, he had got a job. Before he bought a new car, he had got a job. Notice that had got, which is the structure of the past perfect, shows that the action of the past perfect happened first in time. One more example. First, the taxi drivers were on strike, which means they had a problem. So they were on strike. Then they reached a solution, maybe after negotiating with their responsible people, they reached a solution. So the sentence goes like, the taxi drivers had been on strike before they reached a solution. So we have two actions here. One happened before the other. So the, f the first one, the prior one, is put or conjugated in the past perfect tense, unlike the second one, which is reaching a solution that is conjugated in the simple past. Had been shows that this action happened at first in time. This is one important thing that I'm stressing through, through uh, the, the, the whole examples we have seen so far, which you should actually put in mind and never forget. Now let's see an exercise. I'd like you to underline the verbs conjugated in the past perfect in this passage underline the verbs conjugated in the past perfect in this passage. The passage is this. By the time my husband and my son came home, I had prepared lunch. My son had fed the cat before he went to school. Lucky cat. Now, look again. Right, read it. Okay. So what do you think? Shall we move to correction? Right, now let's see. Same passage, by the time my husband and my son came home, I had prepared lunch. My son had fed the cat before he went to school. So what verb have you underlined? Had prepared, right. Is there any other verb conjugated in past perfect in the same passage? Had fed, yeah. So the common point here is that we have like had plus past participle of the verb to prepare in the first case and had plus past participle of the verb to feed in the second example. Well done. We move to a second exercise and this time I'd like you to put the verbs between brackets in the correct tense. Put the verbs between brackets in the correct tense. Last week, I go to bed after I finish my homework. 
there's one thing I'd like you to concentrate on, yeah, which is which action happened first in time. That that's what the clue. I mean, the key element that, that says which um, var is to be conjugated in past perfect and which one to be maybe conjugated in simple past. So last week, I go to bed after I finish my homework. Second sentence? Sorry. Okay, by the time I arrive to the cinema, the movie starts. No. You always put it in mind that um, here we are speaking about past perfect and, well, maybe simple past. So one verb should be conjugated in past perfect and the other in simple past. Of course, the structure or the sentence may um, have lots of you know uh, ways out. Uh, third um, question. Third sentence is the teacher explained the past perfect before he gave an exercise. Which action comes first? Is it explaining the past perfect lesson or giving an exercise? Think it over. Read the sentences again. Right. Now, let's move to the fourth sentence. I read that novel before it become a success. Again, same thing as usual. Now, think about the action that comes first in time. Which action here in the sentence? Is it reading the novel or the novel being or becoming successful or a success? Number three, sorry, number five, by the time I arrive, she leave. Again, which action happened first? Is it my arriving or her leaving? So you think this logic, logically, you will probably be able, you know, to do the exercise quite effectively and accurately. Number six, he study English before he go to USA, right? Most of people, what do they do? Do they study English before they go to USA? Or they go to US and study English? Or is in the second case, probably you're lost. So just hmm, think of it kind of logically and chronologically as well, because time is very important and priority of time is very important in this case. Right. I read the novel, number four, I read the novel before it becomes success. Five, by the time I arrive, she, la she leave. Six, he study English before he go to USA. Let's move to correction. One, I go to bed after I finish my homework. What do you think? I went to bed after I had finished my homework. I went to bed after I had finished my homework. So my going to bed came before, I mean after finishing my homework. I had finished my homework shows that the homework was done before my going to bed, before sleeping. Number two, by the time I arrived to the cinema, the movie start. By the time I arrive to the cinema, the movie start. Your answer is? By the time I arrived to the cinema, I was late. The movie had started. By the time I arrived to the cinema, the movie had started. Third sentence. The teacher explained the past perfect before he gave an exercise. The teacher explained the past perfect before he gave an exercise. So just th I'd like you to just think of it like this. What comes first? I, I guess it's anti-pedagogical to give an exercise without explaining the lesson. So the teacher first explains the lesson, then gives an exercise. So on that basis, we can say the teacher had explained the lesson, sorry, the past perfect before he gave an exercise. I repeat, the teacher had explained the past perfect before he gave an exercise. 
Four sons. I read that book before it become a success. What do you think? Hmm. I had read that book before it became a success. I had read that book before it became a success. Fifth sentence. By the time I arrive, she leave. By the time I arrive, she leave. So by the time I arrived, she had left. Left, by the way, is past participle of the verb to leave. Sixth sentence, he study English before he go to USA. So normally he had studied English first. I mean, before he went to USA. He had studied English before he went to USA. This figure can help you show the timeline of each tense. You see, past perfect, before simple past, and now maybe simple present. The sentence um, demonstrates that uh, I had studied French, which is past perfect, before even I studied English, simple past, and then maybe nowadays I study Spanish. I, I had studied French, I studied English, I study Spanish. Well, this is a past perfect in the interrogative form. Let's just have a look at a couple of sentences to just make a difference between um, affirmative, interrogative, and negative past perfect. Had you been to the US before you moved to Japan? You see? Had you been to the US before you moved to Japan? I mean, here we are switching the auxiliary with the subject, inverting the auxiliary with the auxiliary had with the subject so that it, it becomes like had first, auxiliary first, then subject, and then past participle. Second example would be, had you seen the movie before it met success? Had you seen the movie before it met success? Same rule, you know, had subject and then maybe past participle. Of course, it's past participle. So this is as far as uh, past perfect in the interrogative form is concerned. Now let's see past perfect in the negative form. Do you have any idea? Let's see. I hadn't been to the US before I moved to Japan. No, what's new here? You notice not? I had not been to the US before I moved to Japan. Right? So not, bear it in mind, it's always inserted between had and past participle of the verb. Can't do it otherwise. Second sentence, I had not seen the movie before it met success. I had not seen the movie before it met success. Of course, I'm saying I had not seen, just to stress, not. But we can say even I hadn't seen the movie before it made success. The use. The past perfect tense is often used in English when we are relating to events that happened in the past. The past perfect event happened first. So we have two events in the past. One happened before the other. So the first one or the prior one is conjugated in past perfect and the following one is in a simple past. The form. Affirmative form. I have subject plus had plus past participle of the base, I mean the, the main verb in the sentence, plus complement. See an example? Ahmed, subject, had past participle written, complement that book a long time ago. Ahmed had written that book a long time ago. Let's see another form, negative form. We have subject, had not or hadn't, plus past participle, and then 
compliment. Ahmed hadn't written that book a long time ago. Ahmed had not written that book a long time ago. Notice that not is inserted between had and past participle of the main verb. Interrogative form. <coughs> had plus subject plus past participle plus complement. Had Ahmed written that book a long time ago? Had Ahmed written that book a long time ago? Now, part one of the lesson has to do with past perfect continuous. We are done with past perfect, now we move into past perfect continuous. The past perfect continuous is used to talk about longer situations in the past before a point in time or of time in past. I repeat, the past perfect continuous is used to talk about longer situations in the past before a point of time in past. Examples. Had she been working somewhere else before she moved to this company? Had she been working somewhere else before she moved to this company? They had been living in their old house for 10 years before they bought this one. They had been living in their old house for 10 years before they bought this one. One more example. The man had been working hard before he made a fortune. The man had been working hard before he made a fortune. So the recurrent element here uh, is had and been. Then verb, verb ing. More examples. My computer hadn't been working before I fixed it. My computer hadn't been working before I fixed it. Had you been learning Chinese before you moved to China? Had you been learning Chinese before you moved to China? I had a longer siesta because I had been studying past perfect continuous all day yesterday. I had a longer siesta because I had been studying past perfect continuous all day yesterday. Exercise. Put the verbs between brackets in the correct tense. When I come back home, I was surprised that my aunt wait for two hours. When I come back home, I was surprised that my aunt um, waited or wait for two hours. I could smell cigarettes as somebody smoke by the neighbor's door. I could smell cigarettes as somebody smoke by the neighbor's door. The driver drink before the accident happened. Now, be careful with the third sentence, the last one, because it's a question. There's a question mark there. So remember, which is, you know, interrogative form. Correction. When I, what, what do you think comes first? You know, when I come back home um, or uh, my aunt being waiting at home for two hours? Let's see. All right. When I came back home, I was surprised that my aunt had been waiting for two hours. When I came back home, I was surprised that my aunt had been waiting for two hours, which is, you know, a, a long continuous uh, action that happened in, in the past before a point of time in the past too, as we explained before. I could smell cigarettes as somebody smoke by the neighbor's door. Okay? I could smell cigarettes as somebody had been smoking by the neighbor's door. I could smell cigarettes as somebody had been smoking by the neighbor's door. One more um, sentence. The driver, you remember? So this is the one I told you is uh, interrogative sentence, which is a question. So don't forget to switch or invert um, the uh, had with the past participle. So the driver drink before the accident happened. What we mean drink here is uh, be drinking alcohol, you know, because the accident happened, not water, you might think of water. So the driver drink before the accident happened. So this is the last sentence. Had the driver been drinking before the accident? 
That's the question. And that's the end of my lesson for today. Thank you very much for following me. I'm Slimane again. Goodbye. See you later. <music>